Hi, and welcome back to Football Made Simple. After being out of management for over a year, Mauricio Pochettino got back into it at the club he represented for two years, Paris Saint-Germain. Already, he has won the first managerial trophy of his career, winning the Trophy de Champion against Marseille. So far, it has been a mixed start to his reign, with some poor results and performances mixed in there as well. But what tactics have led to this? Let's take a look. Since Pochettino came in, things have improved slightly compared to the tail end of Tuchel's reign. In 23 matches in all competitions in 2020-2021, Tuchel averaged 2.04 points per game and PSG were third in Liga overall. In 19 games in all comps so far, Pochettino has averaged 2.32 points per game, accumulating the second most Liga points in that time, which has been enough to put them back on top of the overall table. They have lost three times already under him, however, but at the same time, had a landmark win over Barcelona in the Champions League. And taking over mid-season means he hasn't had time to make wholesale changes tactically, but rather just a few crucial adjustments. He has shown he isn't married to a single formation, using the 4-3-3 seven times, the 4-2-3-1 ten times, and the 4-4-2 twice. Special mention must be made of Neymar, who has only played 400 minutes for Pochettino across seven appearances, as he has struggled with injury. But as he is so obviously a key player, and will have a say in the Champions League, we'll also assess how Poch has used him when he has been available. So generally, his preferred formations have looked like this. And Pochettino has been very possession-oriented so far in his reign, looking to play out short from the keeper to the centre-backs, whilst the full-backs move higher and wider. And if PSG are being pressed high, Paredes has been crucial from a deeper zone, looking to move between the centre-backs at times. This is because when Neymar plays as a 10, in this first phase he is willing to drop slightly deeper into the space vacated, whilst Mbappe moves higher, pushing the defence back. If the midfielders were to continue pressing high onto Paredes, it would mean Neymar would be free to receive between the lines and potentially turn. So instead, midfielders tend to sit deeper, which opens up space for Paradis. In addition, in these scenarios, Verratti also starts deeper, and both he and Paradis are extremely press resistant, each capable of using tight turns to get past a man, or the two combining expertly to beat pressure, and then have space to attack with men ahead of them. With Neymar injured, the general principles have remained similar, with some slight tweaks. Verratti tends to stay higher on the left initially, with Gay or Danilo brought in. So when necessary, if Paradis drops into the backline, Verratti can then drop much deeper than a Neymar would into this double pivot zone. But as a result, Mbappe is less able to stay on the defender's shoulder, ready to run behind, and instead comes more narrow into somewhat of a playmaker role in this first phase. But we also see the benefits of Paradis at defensive midfield when he's higher, as opposed to Marquinhos, who Tuchel has preferred. Marquinhos is better on the board than most centre-backs, but is more limited compared to the likes of Paradis in midfield. Paradis is so good centrally, that in the absence of Neymar, higher up the pitch, Verratti doesn't necessarily have to drop deep to help progress the ball, and tends to stay higher in a pseudo number 10 role. And we also see the benefits of utilising such attacking fullbacks in the form of Kazawa and Florenzi, who look to push high and wide early on. Without Neymar, this allows Mbappe to tuck in closer to support Icardi when higher up the pitch, and the threat of his pace generally forces the defence deeper and deeper. And this is where Paradis's penetrative passing comes into play, as even when there appears to be no corridors to pass into, he still manages to find them, potentially taking out all of the opposition's midfield line with one pass. When Neymar does start, with Verratti deep, there is much less of a fixed 10. We can often see him push higher, almost as a second forward, at which point Mbappe will either stay wide to combine with Kazawa. Alternatively, he will come deeper into a more central zone. But Neymar is very much an on-the-ball player, and if Verratti and Paradis's penetrative passes aren't getting to him, he will then move into midfield instead, creating space for Mbappe to push up into. And from these regions, Neymar looks to beat a man to then have several options. Occasionally, he is dispossessed here and it does leave them vulnerable on the counter. And here we see the difference between having Verratti as the 10 and Neymar. Firstly, Verratti is more one-dimensional, 
with less speed of movement between the lines to create space, as well as not having the option of moving higher as a second forward. This makes the attacking shape more fixed with Mbappe high. In addition, he is naturally a deep-lying player, so at times he is slower to make the crucial pass or is more conservative in doing so. Neymar, on the other hand, is fluid, so he and Mbappe are constantly on the move, changing the shape and creating space. Neymar can also beat a man and is quicker in playing first-time flicks around the corner. The role of the right winger also varies. When Di Maria plays there, he tends to come deeper initially to provide an additional creative force higher up, particularly if Gay is playing down the right. Moise Kin, on the other hand, pushes high closer to the forwards. The bottom line is they both provide even more numbers centrally, forcing the opposition to contract. If central progression is not possible, the high and wide fullbacks come into play, as when they receive the ball, the PSG frontmen flood the box, ready to finish off the cross. And quickly touching on the defence. Generally, Pochettino has carried on the high-pressing philosophy Tuchel used at PSG. This is somewhat out of necessity, as the likes of Neymar and Mbappe are less willing to track back consistently into a disciplined shape. They tend to employ a mixture of man and ball oriented pressing, normally resulting in them winning the ball high. But as mentioned, the front line doesn't always track back quickly, so when the first line of pressure is bypassed, PSG can be vulnerable, with the opposition now having the numerical advantage higher up the pitch. And one of the biggest challenges of managing PSG is handling superstar egos. Tuchel seemed to indicate as much saying that at PSG, it wasn't always just about football, and at times he felt more like a politician. Pochettino looks set to employ a more hands-off approach, indicating that he is relaxing his more authoritarian stance when approaching superstars and instead being more open to negotiations. It is early days yet in the Pochettino reign, so it remains to be fully seen how he will impose himself at the club. It has been a mixed start, but with Neymar returning and having more time to teach his methods, Poch will be hoping to turn the club into a serious force. But what have you made of Pochettino's PSG so far? Drop it down in the comments below. And if you want even more content, whilst helping to support the channel, consider checking out my Patreon at patreon.com slash footballmadesimple. You'll get early access to videos, exclusive videos, as well as access to the upcoming FMS video podcast. And a special thanks to Aaron Ag for his support on Patreon and helping to make this video possible.